Well, let's see. I've got lots of different shells. <gasps> you! What are you doing here? We all heard that, right, mateys? What am I doing here? You're in my new home. Your new home? It was on my side of the line. I captured it with my spear claw. Well, then, maybe we need to settle this the mantis shrimp way. My smash claw against my spear claw. <laughs> Laws of danger. Now leave my new home at once or prepare to face my super strong hammer smash. Ha! Hammer smash! Now you must suffer my super fast lightning spear. <laughs> 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 Jumping jellyfish, it's a mantis shrimp showdown. Ultimate super spear. Ultimate super smash. Octonauts, we have to stop this. Please, mantis shrimp, you'll hurt each other. Out of my way. We got no problem with you. This fight for our new home is between us and our claws. Easy now. Why don't we take you back to the reef and... Never! <laughs> Maybe you two need a moment to calm down. There. A little time apart should do the trick. Uh, Camp, we got a vegetable stuck in the kitchen vent. Oh. Again. On my way. What about us? We need help getting out of these old shells. Don't worry, I've got a shell removal kit in the sick bay. Shellington, will you help me carry it? We'll be right back. Hear that? The big guy wants us to calm down. I heard. And I am already calming down at a very fast speed. That's funny, because everyone knows I'm the strongest in the sea at calming down. But you do not have my super fast calming move. <laughs> ah, so calm. <laughs> I'm the calmest, because I could break out of this tank any moment, but I choose not to. Oh, please, I'm so calm. I could shatter this tank with one spear! No! My double whammy hammer smash is stronger! Uh-oh. <laughs> Hardly! My triple whammy spear is faster! <laughs> Why, I order? Maybe they don't know what the word calm means. <laughs> this shell removal kit is just what we need. <gasps> oh my! What? What? They went that away. Lateral. <laughs> Dashi, we've reached the river. Where's the tidal bore now? According to the wave tracker, the tidal bore hit the river about an hour ago. But you've just missed it. Thanks, Dashi. We're heading in. Octonauts, keep your eyes peeled for creatures who need our help. Aye, aye, Captain. It's awfully quiet. Hmm, that's strange. No creatures down here. We'd better check the surface. Where is everybody? Did you hear that? It's coming from the shore. Hi, mateys. There's a group of tiny frogs in the trees, and one of them is waving to us. Let's investigate. Ahoy there, little matey. Oh, don't touch, don't touch. Don't worry, I'm not going to hurt you. No, but he could hurt you. Oh, come on. This little guy hurt me. That's right, that's right. I'm a poison dart frog. I don't bite or sting, but my skin is covered in poison. So if you touch me, you're in trouble, big trouble. That's why poison dart frogs have such brightly coloured skin. It's like a do not touch sign. But I'm pleased to meet you just the same. Name's Robert, Robert. Pleased to meet you too. I'm Captain Barnacles, and this is Quasi, Shellington, and Peso. We're looking for anyone who needs help after the tidal bore. We've got a big, big problem. Fish in the trees. Fish in the trees. Jumping jellyfish, 
The tidal bore must have thrown all the fish high up into the trees. Oh, no. That's not good for the fish. They need water to breathe. They do have some water. But not enough to last long. There now. Back in the river where you belong. But there are lots more stuck up high, really high in the trees. And that means trouble, big trouble for us poison dart frogs. Isn't that there? Oh, 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 oh. Our eggs are about to hatch. And when they do... <gasps> you need the puddles of water up in the trees for the tadpoles. But why do they need puddles of water in the trees? When they hatch, they're not frogs yet. They're called tadpoles. They look like fish and swim in water. Right, exactly right. Each poodle makes a perfect little home for our tadpoles so they can swim around and stay safe. But now all the puddles up in the trees are full of fish. We need to get the fish out of the trees and make room for the tadpoles. And fast. Octonauts to the HQ. Antarctica straight ahead, Captain. Everyone, prepare for ice landing in three, two, one. Everyone ready to get started? I am, Captain. I can't wait to see what creatures live up here on the ice. Quasi, you and Peso will help Shellington watch the ice for creatures. <sighs> You'd have to have coconuts for brains to live here in Antarctica. Can anyone see any creatures out there? Not yet. It's all just white, white, white... And red! Shiver me whiskers! There's something red straight ahead! <gasps> Jumping jellyfish! It looks like a waterfall made out of ice. But why is the ice red? I don't know. I've never seen anything like it before. Fire up the ice spy. The ice spy will show us what's under the ice. A vast! There's a lake down there. That must be where the red ice is coming from. The ice is very thick. Oh, the lake must have been sealed under it for millions of years. Who knows what creatures might live down there? Let's take a look. Peso, detach Octo Sled and activate ice drill. Aye, aye, Captain. Here we go. The ice is too thick. The drill can't take it. We're not giving up yet. Send more heat to the drill. OK, Captain. Almost there. Captain, the drill is broken. Aye, but we reached the lake. The drill will have to wait. Shellington, are you ready to head outside and... Oh, oh. <laughs> That's the spirit, matey. Hurry, I can't wait to see what's down there. Uh oh Take it slowly, Shellington. One careless move out here and we could be in trouble. Yeah! Oh, secret lake, here I come! Amazing. No one has ever seen this place before. Have you any idea why the water's red, Shellington? Hmm. The water contains tiny bits of rusty iron. That's why it's so red. There's rust in the water. Careful! It would be easy to get lost down here. Octonauts, stay close. Ah, the water is also very salty. And cold! And dark! Ah, I don't think any creatures could survive down here. Sorry, Shellington. We'd better get back to the Gup S. Ah, I might as well take a water sample first. All right, settle in, everyone. The Vegimals have prepared hot chocolate. Cuba, cuba. Oh, and kelp cakes. Thanks, Junip. Thanks for the snacks, matey. Uh, but what are we here to see? Quite an amazing sight, actually. And that is? Dashi set up the remote cameras on the beach so we wouldn't miss a thing. Shiver me whiskers. What won't we be missing? Why, the baby sea turtles, of course. Oh, carry on, matey. Right now, the turtles are still in their eggs, in nests buried under the sand. I'll show you how they got their tunip. This is a video we took eight weeks ago. The mother sea turtles swim up onto the beach at night to lay their eggs. It's the only time they ever leave the water. And this is the same beach right now. The eggs have been under the sand all this time and should be ready to hatch at 
Any moment. And we get to watch it happen. I can't wait. Uh, nothing's happening, matey. Well, one can never be exactly sure when the eggs will hatch. It could be a few more minutes. Or a few more days. Days? <laughs> Have patience, everyone. I'm sure it'll be well worth the wait. What is it? Oh, are the ants hatching? No, it's the wave tracker. A really big wave is in the area. It's moving fast and it's heading for the beach. Flippity flippers, what about the eggs? <gasps> They'll be washed away. Chopper! Won't they be safe buried under the sand? Sea turtle eggs are very sensitive. If they get too wet, they'll never hatch. Then we'd better do something. Dashy, sound the octo alert. Octonauts, to the launch bay. Octonauts, we have to rescue those eggs before the wave hits the beach. Once we've gathered up the eggs, we'll need to move them to a new beach, fast. Don't you worry about that, Shellington. We'll be ready. Come on, Tuna. Tuna! Everybody else, into the Gup X. Come in, Shellington. We need help identifying a mysterious creature. <laughs> Certainly, Captain. What can you tell me about it? Well, it's got tentacles. And it can throw eight things at once. And it squirts ink. And it's orange. Hmm. Oh, sounds like a giant Pacific octopus. I agree. My Pacific cousins are the largest species of octopus. And they often make their homes in old abandoned ships. <laughs> well, how about that? I modeled the octopod after the giant Pacific octopus. And now there's one living in it. Yeah, but why did it steal our converter? It was probably just curious. Giant Pacific octopuses are very clever and they always investigate new things. Hmm, then maybe we can give it something new to be curious about. This ought to get its attention. And then, when it comes to investigate, we'll get our converter. Everybody, into position. Lights out. Look! It's huge. Shh! Just a little closer. Now! <laughs> Stay alert, everyone. It might make a swim for it. Yeah. It escaped, and it got the flashlight out of the jar. But where did it go? Huh? Hello. Goodbye. Follow that octopus. Easy now. We're not going to hurt you. Oof. Search everywhere. Captain Barnacles to Shellington, how's your exploration of the coral reef going? Wonderfully, Captain. We've discovered something amazing. A huge stone archway. Uh, you there? Can you help us? Help you? Um, how? Oh, we've got cracks in the archway. And if the cracks keep cracking, the whole thing could come crashing down. <gasps> He's right. The cracks are weakening the arch. It could collapse any moment. Hmm. Is there any way to repair it? I don't think there's time for that, Captain. The cracks are already too big. Right. You'd better move the creatures attached to the arch to a safe area nearby. And be sure to warn other creatures who live around the arch, too. Aye, aye, Captain. We're on it. What 
was that? What was what? I don't see anything. I don't either now. I thought I saw something sticking up out of that burrow. Maybe just a shadow or a puff of sand. Hmm. Well, that's everyone. Maybe. I just want to make sure. Hello? Anyone home? You're wasting your time. I've never seen anybody come or go out of that burrow. I know I saw something. Howdy! I'm Gilbert. Hello, Gilbert. What you looking at? We were looking to see if there's anyone down in this burrow. Of course there is. That's Mama's burrow. Who's Mama? Our Mama! If your Mama lives down there, you have to warn her that... Oh, <laughs> fish certainly do come and go quickly in these burrows. I think I know how to get to the bottom of this. The Rover Cam. It's a camera that can squeeze into tight places. If there's anything in there, we'll see it on this screen. <laughs> Freakaboo! Gilbert, is that you? <laughs> Didn't we just see him swim into that burrow over there? I think it might be one big burrow with different entrances. Look! Whoa. Jumping jellyfish! Amazing! You want to meet Mama? This way! <laughs> Lots of hallways and rooms in this house, huh? <laughs> Mama! We've got company! Hey! Out of here, you! Out, out, out! Maybe I can tempt her out. Say, aren't you the fella I saw earlier? Yes, and I saw you too. Can you come out? We need to talk to you. You can talk to me right here. I'm a convict fish and I never come out. But uh, we met your children out here. We go out and bring Mama food. We're just about to get her some lunch. Now, what do you want to talk to me about? And make it quick. Uh, I'm afraid you and your burrow are in danger. The arch above you is about to collapse. You need to move somewhere else. <laughs> Maybe you didn't hear me. A grown-up convict fish like me never leaves her burrow. Ah, there's nothing here. No, but I thought I saw something. Me too. Something big. The trick is still saying it's up ahead. Then let's go, mateys. It's gone again. I get the feeling it doesn't want to be disturbed. Let's go forward gently this time, so we don't scare it. Whatever it is. You hear that? It sounds so sad. Like the world's loneliest sea monster. Or the world's loneliest whale. That's a humpback whale. But his voice is like no humpback I've ever heard. I think he's looking for food. He's a young one, and he looks very skinny, Captain. Then he might need our help. Activate helmets. Hello there. That's a very interesting song you're singing. Oh, thanks. It's my I'm hungry song. My name's Joe, by the way. Are you on your own, Joe? Yep, I'm pretty much always on my own. I guess the other humpbacks kind of don't understand my singing. Captain, Joe is far from the summer feeding grounds. Without the other whales to show him the way, he won't have enough to eat. Joe, why don't you come with us to our octopod and we'll see if we can help you. I don't suppose there's any food at this here octopod. I'm kind of hungry. Absolutely. Follow us. Right behind you. Mmm, <laughs> these here fish biscuits are pretty good. Captain, I think I found the cause of Joe's unusual voice. What is it, Peso? These are the tubes inside Joe's nose. And these are the tubes inside a typical humpback's nose. See how much smaller Joe's are? Oh. Of course! Whales sing by pushing air through their nose. But because Joe's tubes are so narrow, his songs sound different. Uh-huh. So that's why the other whales can't understand me. Yow! What was that? Oh, gee. <laughs> Just my tummy rumbling. I don't suppose you have any more of those fish biscuits? Captain, Joe can't just eat fish biscuits. He needs a proper whale diet. 
Yeah, and the Vegimals need a break. Hmm, Joe needs food and fast, so we need to get him to join a group of whales who show him to the summer feeding grounds. The last group is on its way to the feeding grounds. After they've gone, there are no more humpbacks in this part of the ocean. Then time is running out. Dashy, sound the octo alert. Ah, activate snow spikes. <laughs> Thank you, Octonauts. You saved the station and my life's work. Now I can share my amazing discovery. Follow me. Click, click. I always pounce on the chance to investigate a strange new sound. When I arrived in Antarctica, I discovered this. <gasps> the bloop sound. But who or what was making it? That was question. I tracked the sound deep in the ice until finally I discovered that the mysterious bloop is made by... A humongous blooptopus. No, it's... A gigantic bloopzilla. No. A monstrous blooperoceros. No, no. The bloop sound is made by enormous ice quakes. Ice quakes? Yes, yes. It's the sound the ice makes when it breaks and moves. Congratulations, Professor Nepquick. That's quite a... Shh, listen. Do you hear that? You hear nothing. I'm afraid we don't have your Arctic fox hearing. Ah, yes. Here, listen through speakers. Ah, yes. I hear it now. What? What is it? Mm, sounds like the pitter-patter of lots of little feet. No, no. It's not Peter Patter, it's a Woodle Waddle. A Woodle Waddle? But what Woodle Waddles? My cousins, the Adelie Penguins, they Woodle Waddle. They're heading back. And they could be heading straight for the ice chasm. Captain, with the wind blowing all the snow around, my cousins might not see the chasm before it's too late. They could fall in. We need to warn them to stay back. Everyone, to the Gup S. Cap, the flares are ready to go. They should be bright enough so the Adeli penguins can see them even through the snow. Good work, Tweak. Now, we just have to make sure our timing is right. Dashy? The radar shows that the Adeli penguins are close to the chasm. All right, Peso. Let's send up the flares. On my count. Three, two, one. Where are you? I want my mom. We'll help you find your mom. What does she look like? It's more important what she sounds like. Each Emperor Penguin family has a special call only they use. I'd recognize my wife's call anywhere, and she's not here. She's not the only one who is missing. Where is Barnacles? I thought the team would be back with the Penguin Mothers. This is Tweak to go S. Hello? Nobody's answering. Wait, wait, I hear something. Me too. Hmm, that sounds like an emperor penguin call. Mixed with a polar bear growl? My darling, I'm here. Bandages? Are you all right, dear? Oh, yes, thanks to the Octonauts. I never would have made it without them. Now, how about a proper hello, little one? Meet your mommy. <laughs> Oh, my little legs all grown up. Captain, what happened? There was wind and snow and an ice chasm. I'm just glad you're all okay. But where's the gup, S? <clears throat> you tell her, matey. Me? Why do I have to tell her? Well, I'm not going to tell her. I'm afraid the gup, S, is at the bottom of an ice chasm. <sighs> Squeak! I didn't think you'd take it that hard. <sighs> we'll figure it all out, Cap. It ought to be a real adventure getting the gup ass out of that chasm. Yep. But first, how about some hot chocolate? Good idea, Quasi. Make mine a double with extra marshmallows. <laughs> <laughs> it's too hot in there. Then we'll just have to go in and find Frank ourselves. You can't just swim into a lava tube. It's as hot as an oven in there. That's why I brought these. These proof diving suits. These 
glasses will protect you from the heat, and the Octo goggles will help you see Frank. If we follow the rover cam's cable, it should lead us to Frank's rock. <gasps> that doesn't sound good. Captain, there's a lot of unusual lava movement beneath the cave. It could erupt at any moment. You better find Frank quickly. Oh, uh oh, get down! I thought the whole cave was going to collapse. I can't see. Look, the rover cat is right here in front of us. Uh, was it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> These octo goggles really do make things look bigger. Look, there's Frank's rock. Frank! There. Oh, no. Hey, Buddy! Over here! Frank, are you all right? We're here to... <laughs> ...rescue you. Hey, it's pretty great down here, ain't it? I met a lot of nice folks. There's Joe. Hi there. And Eddie. How you doing? And LaFord. Hello. And that's old Pops. Oh, uh, howdy. You mean... Water bears can actually live down here. We sure yep. can. <laughs> but don't you little mateys get hot? I told you we was tough. A little heat don't bother us. Captain, the lava tube is about to erupt. We're on our way out, Dashie. You water bears should come with us. No, we're good. We don't mind the heat. Yeah, we like it hot. Harder the better. Oh, we're happy where we are. But the whole cave is about to fill up with lava. No problem. We'll be just fine. <gasps> Tweak, are you all right? Oh, my. Oh, me. Oh. Peso, you'd better prepare one more bed. <laughs> oh. Oh. How are you doing, Peso? This is a lot of patients to take care of at once. Don't worry, Captain. I'm a medic. Taking care of people is what I do. Luckily, I have some help. <laughs> hmm. He must be in the vents. Right. I'm going after him. <laughs> Watch it! What's the big idea? Captain, you did it! <laughs> oh no, you were stung. Just rest easy, Captain. Everything will be... Oh dear. What's happening? Uh, ships entering the Roaring Forties. Very rough water. Need to get through. No, Captain. You are uh, too weak. Oh. Oh, yes. Somebody has to pilot the ship. And that person is you, Peso. Me? <gasps> Peso, use the manual. You can do this. But, but, Captain... You've learned 317 ways to bandage an injured fin. You've performed crabectomies in the frozen Arctic. Oh. Those are medic skills. And I've done those things lots of times. But there was a first time. We're all counting on you. I... I... I have to try. Tunip, keep an eye on my patience. <laughs> all right. Um, autopilot off. Activate steering wheel and turn on the octolift. Whoa! Captain, made it to the steering wheel. Uh oh, big rock. What do I do? It says don't steer, but I have to steer around the rock or we crash. This little reef is only a few years old, but it's already full of life. Aye, this reef is busy, even if it's not very big. Hey, it's big enough. Who said that? I'm right here. Show yourself. Oh, here I am. I'm a frogfish. Name's Anton. Wow, you look so much like the reef. I didn't see you there, matey. That is the idea. 
I'm camouflaged, which means I blend in with what's around me. It keeps me safe from bigger fish who want to eat me, like those sharks. Sharks? Everybody hide. Hmm, oh. I thought I smelled food. Let's head to a bigger reef. See what I mean? <laughs> you fooled them, matey! Fascinating! These other fish can't blend in like the frogfish, but the reef has lots of places for them to hide. This reef keeps us and all our friends safe. It is our home sweet home. Oh, look out! Whew. Sorry about that. We fixed the pedals. Now the gump F steering isn't working right. Aye, and as soon as you fix the steering, something else will break. I know. She's the first gump I ever built, so I can't give up on her. Maybe if I pedal a little faster. Yep, that's good. Whoa! Are you all right? Yep. But now I gotta fix the steering, the pedal, the rudder, the top, the bottom. Ah. Is there anything on the gup F that doesn't need fixing? The seats are still comfy. <laughs> Captain, the storm tracker shows that there's a hurricane on the way. Octopod to Quasi, Shellington and Tweak. There's a hurricane heading your way. And it's moving fast. Take cover in the gups. There's not enough time to return to the octopod. Aye, aye, Captain. We'll ride out the storm in the gub sea. Very good. Barnacle's out. There's a hurricane about to hit, matey. Storm coming. Oh, everyone take cover. Tunic, let's gather up these mangrove seeds. Activate the gut vacuum. forest to plant these seeds. Super, super. Good luck, Shellington. Let us know if you need any help. Don't worry, Captain. We'll have this done in a jiffy. Ah. That's shiny. Oh. The water's getting too shallow for the gup. We'll have to swim from here. <laughs> All right, vegetables, take a seed, make a hole, and push the tip into the ground. There you go. Easy, isn't it? Now let's plant some more. Come in, Shellington. How's the planting going? Oh, we're making good progress, Captain. As I said, we've got this completely under control. Right, Junip? Junip? Uh, Captain, I think we may have a wee bit of a problem. What is it, Shellington? The Vegemals. They've disappeared. Dashy, sound the Octo Alert. Octonauts, to the launch bay. <laughs> The vegetables have gone missing. Oh, oh my! Whiskers. They must have gone into the mangrove forest. 
But why? I don't know, but we're going to help you find them. Quasi, Peso, to the Gup Sea. Tweet, open the Octohatch. You got it, Cap. Captain, the Vegimals must have gone in here. And look what they left behind. What creature makes a bite like this? Yeah, looks like the bite of a fine tooth snapper. Whatever it is, we'd better be careful. Flowing fast. Looks like the flooding caused a lot of damage. There must be more creatures out there who need our help. Octonauts, let's do this. Well done, Octonauts. Everything looks back to normal. Let's head home before it gets too dark. I'll be right there, Captain. It looks like part of the riverbank has collapsed. I just want to make sure no creatures were hurt. All right, Shellington. Captain, Quasi's found something. Feast your eyes on this. Hmm, an egg. It was just sitting there, all alone on the riverbed, Captain. We'd better get it back to where it belongs. But where's that? Ah, the shell is hard and thick. This egg was laid on land. We should show it to, um... Ah! Shellington! Shellington, where are you? Over here, Captain! Ow! Oh, it stung my leg. What? What stung your leg? One of them! Don't let him get away. We're under attack! Quick, everyone back to the car. Oh. Yeah. out there, Shellington. Two creatures came out of nowhere, and one of them stung me in the leg. Oh, what were those things? They had bills and claws and... <gasps> Hold on. I'll be a sea monkey's uncle. It's a pair of duck-faced river monsters. A pair of duck-faced what? Now, Quasi... It is a strange, slippery beast that's said to lurk in Australian rivers just like this one. It's made up of parts from different creatures. A bill like a duck, fur like a bear, webbed paws like an otter, claws like a cat, a tail like a beaver, and worst of all, a sharp, spiny stinger like a giant bumblebee. They're heading for the HQ. Here's mud in your eye. Hey, whoever jumps the highest gets all the mud to himself. You're on. Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> you call that a jump? This is a jump. Hey, jump jellyfish. What's going on? Oh, duh. These mud skippers are having a rumble over the mud, and they sure fight dirty. Of course, I should have known. Mud skippers like to have their own space, and they often fight over it. Uh oh! Then there's only one way to settle this. We'll have to separate them until we reach the mangrove forest in the morning. Ha! Ah. Peso, Quasi, catch! Quasi, scoop up some mud and head for the game pod. Peso, you take some mud to the launch bay, and I'll head back to the garden pod. Hey, that's my mud! Come back! Sorry about this. Is everyone comfortable now? Sure am. Thanks to Peso, I've got this whole place to myself. Oh, yeah. Quasi said the mud is all mine. My name is Mud. Captain Mud. Uh, let's get some sleep now. We need to take you mud skippers to your new home as early as possible tomorrow morning. Good night. Good night. Good night. Now this is 
what a mangrove forest should look like. Quasi, Peso, let's spread out and find some nice mud banks for our friends. You gonna let him water you around like that? Well, he is the captain. That does sound strange. We'll need to take an x-ray to see what's going on in there. Flappity flippers. There's a tiny shrimp inside you. And there's a sea star and a snail. There are all kinds of tiny creatures inside you. Of course there are. I'm a sea sponge. Oh, but I feel like there's something inside me that doesn't belong. Shellington, we need you in the sick bay right away. Oh, this is wonderful. I've never seen a finer example of commensalism. Co-whatalism? Commensalism. It means that all the little creatures inside the sponge get a safe place to live, even though the sponge doesn't get anything from them. It's not for nothing they call us sponges the hotels of the sea. And it doesn't bother you. No, not at all. I've never had any problems. Oh, until today. Yes, and if the sponge isn't happy, we aren't happy. Oh. oh. Where are we anyway? Yeah, nobody bothered to ask us before they yanked us off our reef and stuck us in this pan. And what's with all the poking and prodding and light shining in me eyes? Well, well I say. This used to be a nice place to live. Come on, everybody, let's get out of here. Uh-oh, they're running out of room. We need to find places to put all these creatures fast. A room with a view. <sighs> That's the last one, Peso. Do you feel any better now that everybody's out? No. There's still something in there. What could it be? I don't know. But there's only one way to find out. We've got to take a closer look inside. Tunip, sponge-a-scope, please. <laughs> All right. This shouldn't hurt, but you may feel a little... <laughs> tickle. Having a look in... No? See anything yet, Peso? Aha! <laughs> Shellington, what is that creature? It looks like a louse. A whale louse. <coughs> what are you looking at? A louse! No wonder I'm feeling so lousy. That thing doesn't belong inside of me. <laughs> You're telling me? He doesn't look like he's feeling very well either. Of course he isn't. Whale lice can only survive on whales, not inside sponges. Excuse me, Mr. Louse, but we need to get you out of this sponge right away. <laughs> oh no! No way! I'm a whale louse! I ain't leaving until somebody finds me a whale to live on! Captain, the sponge won't feel better until the louse is out of her, and the louse won't feel better until he's back on a whale. Uh, wait, uh, where's my notebook? Uh, and my magnifying glass. Uh, oh, thanks, Tunit. No, no, I'll drive. Tweak, open the octo hatch. Be careful, Shellington. Oh, don't worry. Right. Uh, oh, 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 oh. That's better. Captain, I'm on my way. I'll be there as fast as I can. All right, Shellington, but don't worry. We'll take good care of this baby jelly. Now all we have to do is to wait for Shellington. Do, 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 do. Shellington, Shellington. Oh, where are all those bubbles coming from? <gasps> We've got to catch that jelly before the whale swallows it. No, it's heading for the whale's mouth. Time for some tickling. Tickling? 
we'll tickle the whale to keep his mouth open long enough to grab the baby jelly. Quasi, you take the tail, I'll take the belly, and Peso, I'll take the jelly. Let's go. Activate tickle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got you. <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> now that was a good laugh. Phew. Shellington to Captain Barnacles. Come in, Shellington. How's the baby immortal jelly? Oh, he's doing just fine. Except that he almost got swallowed by a whale. <gasps> Swallowed by a whale? <laughs> Don't worry, the baby jelly is safe and sound. It might be a good idea uh, to set him down somewhere on a nice, secure <laughs> rock. A rock? Uh, yes, a growing jelly goes through big changes. First, the baby attaches to a rock. Next, it turns into a polyp. And then the polyp turns into the grown-up jelly. Understood. We'll find a rock then. And I'll see you soon, Captain. Shellington, out. Out, out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just get us going again. Uh... Oh. The gup's not working. We need another way to travel. Swimming will take too long. First up, first up. Booster packs. Good thinking, Tunip. Activate booster packs. Ah! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Kelp strands are connected to the seafloor by these special roots. If these roots come loose, the kelp will float away. If too much kelp floats away, there'll be no more kelp forest. And all these creatures will have nowhere to live. But what's causing all the kelp to come loose in the first place? A vast! Look, mateys! I was afraid of this. Red urchins. Red urchins destroy kelp roots. They can wipe out an entire kelp forest. Unless there are sea otters <gasps> around to eat them. Pearl! <laughs> Hello, Shellington. Everybody, this is my sister Pearl, the sea otter. Oh, hiya. Hi, Hello. Hi, hi. Pearl is a scientist, just like me. She knows practically everything about kelp forests and kelp plants. Actually, kelp isn't a plant at all. It's a type of algae. See? So this is who you wanted us to meet. Uh, not exactly, but I'm sure Pearl can tell us what's wrong with the kelp forest. Ah, uh, yes. I'm afraid I've fallen a bit behind on my urchin duties. Urchin duties? Yes, we sea otters are what's known as a keystone species. The whole kelp forest depends on us to eat the red urchins so they don't destroy it. It's our duty as sea otters. But I've never seen you eat an urchin. Uh, well, actually, as it turns out, I'm allergic to urchins. Shellington helps the kelp forest in a different way, as an octonaut. Oh, usually, I can keep the urchins under control all by myself. But lately, I've been kind of busy with... Well, let me show you. He's right over here. I wrapped him up in kelp so he wouldn't drift away. Everybody, this is Periwinkle. <laughs> this is who I wanted you all to meet. My new nephew. Oh, oh, look at look him. how fuzzy he is. But he's still just a baby, so I spend most of my time feeding him, cleaning him, and teaching him how to find food. Once Per is a little older, he'll be able to dive down to eat red urchins too. As a matter of fact, it's just about time for Perry's first diving lesson. Oh, but I still have to catch up on my urchin duties. Pearl, why don't you and Shellington give Perry his diving lesson and let us clear the urchins out of the kelp forest? Oh, that 
would be wonderful. Octonauts, let's do this. We eat red urchins like this. Now you try. Oh, no, sweetie, that's a rock. Out of here before the hammerheads. Oh, get away. Shellington, come in, Shellington. Uh, you won't believe this, but I've crashed the Gup D. Again? Yes, and I can't follow the hammerhead pop. I need backup. We've lost contact, Captain. Dashy, sound the octo alert. Octonauts, to the launch bay. <laughs> Octonauts, Shellington has crashed the Gup D. Again? Yes, he was following three hammerhead shark pups. We have to help him. Captain, it looks like he was heading toward the open ocean. That's a dangerous place for hammerhead pups. In that case, we'd better hurry. <laughs> Shellington, are you all right? I'm fine, Captain, but the hammerhead pups are gone. We need to split up to find them and then follow them. Yeah, follow a little baby hammerhead. This'll be easy. Just don't follow too closely, Quasi. They're still very young and the gups may confuse them. Got it. Shellington, you're with me. Octonauts, let's do this. Still no sign of any hammerheads. Wait. Shellington, I think I see one of them. Great. Now, don't let him out of your sight. That should be hard. He's just nosing along the seabed like he's looking for something. I can't see you, Stingray, but I can smell you under there. Oh, yeah? Smell this! Ah! Oh, no! The hammerhead just got stung by a stingray! Don't worry, Peso. Hammerheads don't mind a stingray sting or two. That won't stop me! No! How's about them? Go get them, boys! Uh-oh! Hey. Oh dear, I've got to help him! Hello! Don't be afraid. I'm a medic, and I'm here to take these stinger barbs out. Some penguins are so uptight. Octonauts, to the HQ! Octonauts, what's going on? There's something aboard the ship. We found eggs in the garden pod. I saw it in the library. I almost captured it. It was a snake. <gasps> a snake? On the octopod? Are you sure, Peso? Yes, it was in my medical bag. It must have been a sea snake. Many kinds of snakes live underwater. Was it one of these, Peso? No, no. That's the one. A sea crate. They're the only sea snakes who lay their eggs on land and not in the ocean. Those must have been sea crate eggs that we found in the garden pod. But how did one get on board? I'll check the security cameras. There! Aha! So she snuck in in the middle of the night. And now she's trying to get out. 
Once sea crates lay their eggs on land, they immediately return to the water. She can't swim out now. She'll get sucked right into that whirlpool. Octonauts, find the sea crate and keep her on board until it's safe. Um, there's just one other little thing, Captain. Sea crates are poisonous. <sighs> poisonous? Yes, but she'll only bite if she's scared. We'll have to be very, very gentle with her. These handy snake grabbers ought to do the trick. Octonauts, let's find that snake. <gasps> that whirlpool is stronger than we thought. Dashy, activate steering wheel. Oh, yeah, Captain. Getting off this ship. Follow that snake! This must lead to the sea. Oh no, you don't! <laughs> Captain, the snake is escaping through the lab vent. Let me see if I can help. I need to get into the sea. Why are you trying to stop me? We're just trying to help. There's a dangerous whirlpool out there. If you go out now, you'll get sucked right in. We're in this tentacle suit. Professor Inkling will be able to move the arms of the octopod as if they were his own. Whoa! I may not be good at pushing buttons, but I'm an expert at tentacle wrestling. Excellent. Activate tentacle suit. Twist to the side. Now down. That's it. <laughs> You're swashbuckling like a proper pirate, Professor. Ugh, oh my, I need to break free before he gets his hooks in us. Hooks? What hooks? The colossal squid has hooks on the ends of his tentacles. Yeah, which makes it quite a challenge to get away from him. Almost there. Just a few more twists and turns, and we'll be in this. <gasps> Ink Cloud, a classic move from the squid playbook. Oh no, I can't see where his tentacles are. That's right, eat my ink. I'm taking you down. Way down. Captain, I'm afraid he's hooked us. Understood. Quasi, to the launch bay. Here's the plan. We'll swim outside and use our own paws to pry those hooks off the ship. for a swashbuckling pirate. For every hook we loosen, two more move into place. This will take all my polar bear strength. Got it. Oh. Captain, incoming tentacle. Thanks, Quasi. Anytime. Better keep moving. Captain, there's something heading straight for us. It's a pod of sperm whales, and sperm whales love to eat colossal squid. Ooh, I don't like the sound of that. If the sperm whales try to eat the colossal squid, then they might take a bite out of the octopod too. Oh, it's every squid for himself. I'm getting out of here. Oh, oh, oh. Stop holding on to me. Let go. You're the one who's hooked onto us. You're right. I'm stuck. I'll never get away from the sperm whales if I can't move fast enough. Captain, the sperm whales are getting closer. <laughs> We're doomed! Don't worry. We'll keep you and the octopod safe from the sperm whales. 
You found an egg, Tunip. Let's see. Oh, Tunip, that's a pebble. Keep trying. Here you go. Three eggs, safe and sound. I think he said that's Joseph, Josephine and Judith. <laughs> Captain, three eggs have been returned safely to the jawfish's mouth. Well done. Thanks, Shellington. One, two, three, seven more to go. Captain, I've reached the geezers. Whoa! Say, ah. Uh... Tunip, did you find one this time? <coughs> no, that's a seashell. <coughs> Captain, we found three more eggs. And I found two. That's eight altogether. I'll keep searching for the other two, but the current has loosened up the rocks. Whoa, so it might get tricky. Close, <coughs> whoa. Really? Whoa. Bingo. Time to take you home. Three more eggs, safe and sound. Oh, Nine down, still one to go. It's Jimmy Junior, named after his father. A brave little egg with a sense of adventure. He's out there somewhere. Dashy, come in. Yes, Captain. We've searched the cliffs, the geezers, and the trench, but there's still one egg missing. His name is Jimmy Junior. The last egg could still be caught up in the current, which has moved past the rocky trench and is heading into open water. Thanks, Dashy. Quasi, Peso, if we don't find that egg soon, it could be lost for good. Let's move! 